Data science and AI has applications across the domains. So if you speak about automotive domain, automotive companies can use data science and AI for predicting the need of maintenance for the vehicles. They can use data science for predicting the need of maintenance for the machineries which are placed in the manufacturing unit. Because what happens sometimes is if some of the machines goes down, there is a loss of production in that manufacturing plant. Then they can also use data science for predicting demand because demand forecasting is a strong use case for automotive and manufacturing companies. Hi guys, my name is Rohit and in today's video, we would build machine learning model for predicting the need of maintenance for automotive engines. So we are going to build predictive maintenance models for the automotive industry. Let's get started. So at the top, we are importing the modules that we need. So we have imported NumPy and Pandas library. Then for visualization, we have imported Matplotlib and Seaborn library. Then for training the model, train test split, we have imported the train test split function from scikit-learn. In this project, we are going to build random forest classifier. So we have imported that. And we have also imported the metrics which are needed for evaluating the classification model. So we have done the import operations in this particular section. So we are going to build a machine learning model for predicting the need of maintenance based on the health of engine. So in this particular project, we are getting various data points. So we are getting information about engine RPM. So that basically stands for revolutions per minute of the engine. Then we are getting information about lube oil pressure. So this is basically the pressure exerted by lubricating oil within the engine. Then we are getting fuel pressure, coolant pressure, then the temperature of the lubricating oil, which is again very, very important from the engine's health point of view. And we are also getting coolant temperature. So all these parameters we are getting related to the engine for every automotive engine that is in use. And we are going to use these parameters, the values of these parameters to predict the condition of engine, to predict the need of maintenance. So the data that we have is a binary classification problem. So in this particular column, engine condition, we are getting the labels. So zero stands for unhealthy engines and one stands for healthy engines. So we are reading the data from a CSV file, engine data.csv using read CSV function from Pandas. And then I'm just displaying the top 10 rows using the head function. So these are the columns which we discussed. We are getting the values for them and the corresponding label. So if you think of this model, this would be really, really useful for all the automotive companies. So if they start capturing data related to the engines which are in use, they can also build similar model for predicting the need of maintenance for any engine. So using info function, we can get to know how many data points we have and whether we have missing values. So if you see here, in total, we have 19,535 data points, or you can say 19,000 plus engines data we have. And all the columns have the values. So we don't have any null values. So everything is non-null. So it seems like already a good data. Using describe function, we can get information about various columns and how they are distributed or what are the statistical values related to every column. So if you see engine RPM, the minimum value for engine RPM is 61 and maximum is 2239. Then lube oil pressure, the minimum value is 0 0.03 and it can go up to 7.26 and the average value is 3.3. Fuel pressure, it can go from 0 0.003 all the way up to 21. Then if you see coolant temperature, coolant temperature minimum value is 61 and it can go all the way up to 195. So this is how we are getting the information about all the columns using describe function. Then let's just check if you have any missing values. So you can check it using isNA function and we are just adding up all the missing values for every column. So if you see this, we are having zero missing values across all the columns. So engine condition is the column which we are going to predict using our machine learning model. 
So if you apply value counts function from pandas on this column, you would come to know how many data points we have for each class. So for class one, we have twelve thousand plus engines, and class zero, we have seven thousand plus engines. So just to reiterate, in terms of class zero and class one, class zero is for unhealthy engines, and class one is for healthy engines. So we have twelve thousand healthy engines and seven thousand. Plus unhealthy engines. Now, in this section, I am visualizing the data to identify how data is distributed and compare it across the classes. So, basically, we are using box plot from Seaborn for visualizing the data, and I am creating subplots. So, basically, we are going to create two by three matrix, and in each section, we are going to have plots. So, all the variables, all the features which we have in this particular classification model. we are going to visualize those features with respect to the value that we want to predict so if you see here engine condition so basically engine rpm is on a higher side if you see this right the way to which you can read the box plot this central line represents the median value so median value for class 0 for engine rpm is on a higher side as compared to median value for class 1 so class 1 are your healthy engines and class 0 are your unhealthy engines then if you see here fuel pressure so fuel pressure is bit on a higher side for healthy engines and bit on a lower side for unhealthy engines so if you see all these features you would see that apart from engine rpm other features are more or less having similar ranges okay so just by seeing this data it looks like very challenging problem to separate healthy and unhealthy engines based on only the features which we have this definitely looks like a stronger feature because there is a difference in the values for this feature but remaining features are kind of having similar ranges for healthy as well as unhealthy engines but this is a multi feature problem so we can still find out patterns which might not be present with respect to univariate analysis but with respect to multivariate analysis the patterns might still exist okay so now we are going to split the data and what we are doing in this case is we are calling train test split and features function which we have written over here now in this function we are passing our data frame df which has information about the engine along with the label so we are creating our y variable which would be basically the engine condition which we want to predict and x variable which would be all our features so in features we won't be using the y variable or the column on which we want to do the prediction so we are dropping that column from our data frame and all other columns are our features we have six features in total then we are using the inbuilt function from scikit learn train test split to this function we are passing our features data and our labels data and we are going to split the data into training and testing data set so i am passing test size point 20 so this is going to create 80 20 split 80% data would be present in training and 20% data would be present in testing so we would train our model on our train data and we would evaluate our model on our test data so basically these are the columns we have now in this particular project we are going to build random forest classifier so we don't have to scale the data so data scaling is not really needed because random forest classifier uses decision trees at the back end and decision trees are not impacted by scales of the feature so even if you have features which are on different scale it's not a problem for decision trees so we won't do any scaling but if you wanted to use say something like logistic regression model then i would recommend you to apply scaling before building the model Okay so this is our fit and evaluate model function so which we are going to use for building the model so we are calling this function over here and to this function we are passing our train and test data set which we created in above function so if you go to this function we are creating a random forest classifier to this random forest classifier we are keeping max depth 5 we are keeping the mean sample split 0.01 so it means that the maximum depth of individual decision trees which would be created within random forest would be 5 then mean sample splits 0.01 it means that there should be at least 1% samples present at any node to split the tree further 
Max features we are keeping 0.8. This is related to feature bagging. So at any node we are going to use only 80% of the features. And max samples we are keeping 0.8. So it means that at any node we are going to use only 80% of the data points for creating that particular decision tree. So this is related to the data bagging concept. So here we are fitting the random forest model using the fit function. To that we are passing our training data set and corresponding labels. And then we are creating the prediction here using the predict method. So name of the model dot predict and passing it our test data frame. So our predictions would be stored in this particular variable. After that we are creating a confusion matrix. So confusion matrix would need original labels which were present in Y test. So these are our test labels and these are the predicted labels on the test data. We have created the prediction over here. Then we can also calculate the accuracy score. So that would also require both the labels, the actual labels and the predicted labels. And then we can also print the classification report. So classification report needs your actual labels and predicted labels. So we are printing or creating bunch of evaluations over here. So let's see what kind of results we are getting. So this is our confusion matrix. So values which are on this diagonal. So 507 and 2137. These are the accurate predictions. So first row represents the predictions for class 0 and second row represents predictions for class 1. So the overall accuracy that we are getting in this case is 67.67%. So our model is almost 68% accurate in predicting which engine is healthy and which engine is unhealthy. And if you see the precision recall score, so basically class 0 is for unhealthy engine. So on unhealthy engine, the precision is still okay but the recall is very small. It's just 0.36. And overall F1 score for class 0 is 0.45 and class 1 it is 0.77. So this model is performing better in identifying the healthy engines as compared to identifying the unhealthy engines. So when you get such results, 68% accuracy. So this model is still useful because at least it would tell you which are the potential engines which are unhealthy without doing any manual inspections. Just by capturing the data, you can know which engines are unhealthy. But you can improve this model further if you get more information about the engine. So instead of getting just these six features, if you get few more features related to that engine. Maybe what is the lifetime of that engine from how many months that engine is running because the older engines might be in unhealthy condition, right? So those kind of features we might have to add in this model when we work this model in the industry and that would completely improve the results further. So when you work in the industry on any problems, always think of if you can add more features in that particular model to get better results. You can always try different models as well. But what I have seen based on my experience, your results would be improved by adding more features if, as compared to trying some other complex model. So after this, we are calculating the important features. So feature importance we can get using model.featureimportances parameter. And we are just storing the feature importance into a data frame so that it becomes much more readable. So this is the data frame in which we have stored all the feature importances. So if you see here, the first column is for importance score and the second column is the feature name. And this is in the ascending order. So the lowest importance is given to coolant temperature and the highest importance is engine RPM. So engine RPM is having importance of 0.636. So when we discuss these visualizations, I told you that there is a clear difference between class 0 and class 1 with respect to the distribution of the data if you compare two classes for engine RPM feature. So this feature was already looking like a strong feature for separating class 0 and class 1 but remaining features the values are more or less comparable so those were looking like a weaker features and that's what we are finding in the feature importance as well so the feature with highest importance is engine rpm so in this step we are now just going to visualize the data that we have with respect to feature importance so i'm creating the horizontal bar plot and to that plot i'm passing the feature names and the importances. So this is the feature importance. The highest important feature is engine RPM, then fuel pressure, then lube oil temperature and other features are also contributing. So every feature is basically contributing to this result, but engine RPM and fuel pressure seems to be the top contributors. 
Right guys so i hope you now have clarity in terms of how to build machine learning models specifically in the automotive industry so tomorrow if you land a job in automotive industry as a data scientist definitely think about this use case so if your company is capturing data related to the engine parameters you can build such model and as i mentioned in this model you can add much more features so for example adding how old that engine is in which region that engine is operating what is the type of vehicle that for that particular engine so all those data points you can add and you can get better and better results on this particular machine learning model thanks for watching the video and i will see you in the next one bye bye